A twin engine fused into one monstrous contraption promised unstoppable power for Germany's Heinkel HE-177 bomber. But what if the power system itself was so flawed that it became infamous for turning state-of-the-art aircraft into flaming wrecks? The Daimler-Benz DB606 was meant to be an engineering marvel, yet it shocked the Luftwaffe and the world for all the wrong reasons. Now, in the early years of World War II, German aviation stood at the cutting edge of technology. Desperate for a long-range bomber that could strike fear into enemy territory, the Reich's Aviation Command pinned its hopes on radical engine concepts. The Daimler-Benz DB606 power system was a prime example of that ambition. A twin-engine design merged into a single unit, boasting enormous horsepower. Now, on paper, it looked like a giant leap forward, but in reality, it would be remembered as a flawed gamble that triggered political outrage and cost the Luftwaffe a crucial edge in the war. Now, over the next few minutes, we're going to dive into how this bizarre engine came to being, why it proved so enticing to the German high command, and how it ultimately contributed to one of the most infamous aircraft failures of the entire conflict. From design dreams to overheated nightmares, this is the shocking story behind the Daimler-Benz DB606. If you're fascinated by the hidden chapters of aviation history, be sure to subscribe so you never miss the real stories behind the warplanes that time almost forgot. Now, back to the episode. Now, in the late 1930s, Germany was racing to develop bombers that were capable of long-range missions with heavy payloads. The Luftwaffe's doctrine initially leaned heavily on dive bombing, even for large aircraft. They believed that steep-angle precision attacks could devastate enemy positions more effectively than level bombing from high altitudes. This is the climate in which the Henkel HE-177 Griff heavy bomber took shape. Yet, the HE-177 was tasked not only with being a strategic bomber, but also with achieving near-dive bombing capabilities, a tall order for a large four-engine aircraft. The RLM, or German Aviation Ministry, insisted on these conflicting requirements, hoping to produce a bomber that could both carpet bomb cities and glide down in steep dives against hardened military targets. At the heart of these ambitious plans was a need for an engine system that could provide an extraordinary power-to-weight ratio. Traditional four-engine layouts weighed the aircraft down, while twin-engine configurations lacked the sheer thrust that was needed for a heavy bomber. Daimler-Benz proposed a radical approach to solve both problems, merging two of their successful DB601 or DB605 V12 power plants side-by-side -side into one engine block, driving a single propeller shaft. The idea was deceptively simple. You get the horsepower of two engines with the space and weight savings of a single unit. The result was dubbed the DB606 power system. Now, at first glance, it seemed like an engineer's dream. The 601, later the 605, was a proven liquid-cooled V12. This was used in frontline fighters like the Messerschmitt Bf 109. By joining these engines in a so-called coupled arrangement, Daimler-Benz could theoretically produce around 2,600 to 2,900 horsepower from a single power egg, taking up less room in the aircraft's fuselage or wing. For the HE-177, which had to maintain only two propeller assemblies due to the RLM's insistence on a twin-engine bomber design, this was the best way to meet horsepower requirements without slapping four separate nacelles onto the wing. Despite Daimler-Benz's success with high-performance engines, well, merging two complete engines into one housing was far from straightforward. Designers had to integrate complex gear trains to synchronize power output. The merge block required extensive cooling solutions to handle the doubled heat load. The lubrication system, fuel lines, and exhaust manifolds all had to operate under unprecedented stress. Now, by mid-1937, prototypes of this double-engine concept were on the bench at Daimler-Benz. Engineers boasted that not only would they meet the Luftwaffe's power demands, but the new system engine would be more compact and aerodynamic than an equivalent four-engine setup. Propaganda from the time heralded this as the final word in German engine innovation. The political atmosphere in Germany under the Nazi regime played a big role in the DB606's development. Men like Ermin Göring, head of the Luftwaffe, publicly championed advanced projects, expecting quick results to impress Hitler and outclass Allied bomber fleets. In this pressure cooker environment, cautious engineering took a back seat to bravado. The RLM also had a fixation on unique designs that embodied German ingenuity. This further paved the way for the DB606 to receive substantial funding, even though some engineers privately voiced concerns over the complexity of coupling two engines. 
Speaking of hidden truths and engineering gambles, if you enjoy exploring the overlooked corners of wartime aviation, take a second and subscribe. We uncover stories like this every week. Now, when development transitioned from prototypes to production, the DB-606 excited many with its bold claims. On test stands, it seemed to produce around 2,700 horsepower, an incredible figure for the era. It was designated for use primarily in the Heinkel HE-177 bomber, with the possibility of being adapted for other large aircraft if the concept proved successful. Compared to existing inline or radial engines individually producing about 1,100 to 1,600 horsepower, the DB-606's rating was quite enticing. For the German war machine, horsepower was everything. More power means bigger bomb loads, higher altitude, faster climbs, and extended ranges. On paper, the 606 overshadowed nearly all contemporary Allied engines. In an era when many four-engine bombers topped out at about 1,200 horsepower per engine, Having two power eggs, each nearing 3,000 horsepower, that was truly revolutionary. One advantage in the HE-177 design was the possibility of sleeker engine nacelles. Instead of four engine pods jutting out from the wing, the aircraft only needed two. Theoretically, it reduced drag, thereby improving speed and range. This was especially appealing for a bomber that needed to cover long distances or be agile enough for a steep dive. The fewer protrusions on the wings, the more aerodynamic the overall shape. In official briefings, Heinkel's design team touted the future HE-177 as the fastest heavy bomber in existence, and that promise hinged on engines like the DB-606 delivering monstrous power in compact form. Most large Allied bombers at the time used air-cooled radial engines, robust, simpler to maintain, but often larger in the frontal area. The DB-606 stuck to Daimler-Benz's tradition of liquid-cooled inline engines, which allowed for a narrower profile and theoretically better aerodynamic performance. But the question soon arose, how do you efficiently cool two side-by-side -side engines in a single block without doubling the radiator space or overcomplicating the piping? Daimler-Benz tried to design specialized coolant pathways. They employed complex manifolds to circulate coolant evenly throughout the co-joined blocks. The same philosophy applied to the lubricating oil system. On the test stand, these solutions worked, well, mostly. But real-world flight conditions, especially in extended high-power operations and in combat maneuvers, were a different story altogether. Another innovation was the gear train that allowed the single propeller shaft to handle nearly 3,000 horsepower. The gearing had to be finely tuned to avoid destructive vibration. Ironically, some of the early gearboxes on DB-606 test units became known for their alarming whine or chatter, which signaled that they were too close to the system's resonance frequency. Engineers scrambled to modify gear tooth angles, lubricants, and damper mechanisms. Despite these complex tasks, the promise of the 606 remained a gleaming trophy of German technical prowess. Pilots, ground crews, and the high command alike hoped that once perfected, this super engine would give the Luftwaffe an unstoppable advantage. The HE-177 Griff was the Luftwaffe's only long-range heavy bomber to see operational service in any significant numbers. Initially, there was excitement that the plane would be a game-changer for Germany's strategic bombing capability, striking at distant targets. The key to its potential was the Daimler-Benz DB-606 power system. With only two propeller assemblies, the HE-177 was expected to achieve speeds and ranges that might rival or surpass Allied bombers like the B-17 or the Lancaster. Now, During the early production phases of 1941 and 1942, the first operational HE-177s began trickling into service. Luftwaffe crews quickly realized that they were dealing with a temperamental beast. They needed special training on the handling characteristics of the DB-606. Throttle adjustments had to be managed carefully to prevent uneven load distribution between the co-joined blocks. Now, even mundane operations like warming up the engines on the ground proved trickier than for single inlines or radials. Any discussion of the HE-177 inevitably leads to the dreaded reputation that it earned as the Flaming Coffin or Reichsfusik. Excuse my German, I think it means the Reich's lighter. Now, one of the biggest factors in these engine fires was the cramped installation of the DB-606 in the HE-177's nacelles. The close pairing of two engines into one housing generated excessive heat. Under high power settings, like takeoff or climbing in a steep bomber dive, temperatures rose dramatically. If any minor leak appeared in the fuel or oil lines, the intense heat could spark a blaze. 
Cooling ducts were insufficient, and design constraints forced the radiator placements into less than ideal positions. The RLM's demand that the HE-177 be dive-capable only exacerbated these issues. Crew members reported mid-flight engine failures, engine fires, and, in some tragic cases, entire aircraft being consumed by flames before any chance at an emergency landing. Ground crews found the DB-606 complicated to maintain. Accessing the inner cylinder banks was extremely difficult. Mechanics had to contort themselves around piping, coolant line, and the coupling gear assembly. Routine tasks like replacing spark plugs or checking for leaks required significantly more labor hours than for a conventional single engine. The scarcity of spare parts, especially as the war progressed, further hampered reliability. This maintenance nightmare contributed to a high turnover of operational aircraft. HE-177s might achieve a couple of successful missions, only to be grounded for extensive engine overhauls. The Luftwaffe's logistical chain was already strained, and the DB-606 demanded a level of care that was increasingly unsustainable in a war economy under Allied bombardment. Now, as problems mounted, Daimler-Benz attempted to address them in a revised model known as the DB-610. Now, this newer version rearranged and improved various components to better manage heat and oil circulation. Now, while the DB610 did reduce the incidence of catastrophic fires compared to the 606, it never fully shed the stigma of unreliability. By the time that it was introduced in quantity, Germans' fortunes in the war had turned sharply, and no amount of engine improvements could salvage the broader failure of the HE177 concept. From a strategic viewpoint, the HE-177 was supposed to be Germany's answer to the Allied strategic bombing campaigns. Equipped with Daimler-Benz's advanced engines, it was meant to conduct deep strikes into enemy territory, leveling infrastructure and factories. Yet internal politics and conflicting demands had hamstrung the aircraft from the beginning. Heinkel's design team was burdened by the RLM's insistence on dive capabilities in a heavy bomber a misguided attempt to replicate the Stuka's precision on a much larger scale. In practice, crews discovered that attempting any steep angle maneuvers in the HE-177 was courting disaster. The stress placed on the wings, airframe, and especially the engines was too high. Chronic engine fires led to too many losses or near losses in training alone, let alone in actual combat. Although the HE-177 did see action on the Eastern Front and occasionally against Allied targets elsewhere, their availability was limited. Squadrons that received the aircraft reported frequent mechanical downtime, forcing them to rely on smaller, more reliable bombers like the Ju-88 or the HE-111 for missions. Some HE-177 missions involved anti-shipping roles, particularly attempted strikes on Arctic convoys. The aircraft could carry heavy loadouts, including guided bombs like the Fritz X, but their performance in these roles was undercut by the DB-606's reliability woes. By 1943, the Luftwaffe's leadership found itself scrambling to address the HE-177's ongoing engine fiasco. High losses and poor mission completion rates piled up. Pilots and ground crews grew vocal about how the DB-606 hampered their operational readiness. Rumors and jokes circulated in Luftwaffe circles about the power system, that it did more to incinerate its own plane than enemy positions. Morale suffered, and so did faith in bold and untested ideas. As engine fires continued to plague the HE-177, blame flew in all directions. Some pointed the finger at Heinkel for poor engine installation design, and others insisted that Daimler-Benz overpromised on performance. Still, others placed the ultimate fault on the RLM for forcing contradictory requirements, a twin-engine heavy bomber that can also dive bomb. In the Nazi hierarchy, scapegoating was a common survival strategy. Internal feuds raged between various leaders and organizations, from Reichsmarschall Ermann Göring to Erhard Milk, who was in charge of production, all the way to Heinkel's top management. The fiasco became so notorious that it tarnished the overall reputation of the Luftwaffe's engineering efforts. Where once German aviation was lauded for pioneering jets and rockets, the DB-606 fiasco stood as a glaring example of flawed policy, arrogance, and the danger of trying to merge contradictory design requirements into one machine. Across the Channel and the Atlantic, Allied bombers like the B-17 Flying Fortress, B-24 Liberator, Hanley Page Halifax, and Avro Lancaster were evolving into robust and proven designs. Though none of them were perfect, they still benefited from tried-and-true, individually installed radial or inline engines. If a single engine failed, the others could keep the aircraft airborne long enough to return home. 
maintenance was more straightforward, and large-scale production lines meant abundant spares and standardization. In contrast, the HE-177's reliance on the DB-606 meant that a single engine failure could doom the mission, or the aircraft, because each engine was really two engines joined together, a breakdown in one half could throw the entire propulsion system off balance. The margin for error was very tiny, especially in combat conditions. Germany hoped that the HE-177 would serve as a strategic bomber to hit the Soviet factories in the Ural Mountains or even possibly targets in Britain, but repeated mechanical setbacks meant that the Luftwaffe never had a reliable, large-scale strategic bombing fleet to match the Allies. As the war shifted firmly to the Allies' favor, the DB-606's potential significance for Germany's cause proved moot. It was an enormous amount of resources that was wasted on an uh, engine concept that just didn't live up to its claims. Despite the abysmal track record, the 606 taught engineers valuable lessons about high-output coupled engines, cooling requirements, and the practical limits of existing metallurgy. Now, it foreshadowed the complexities that would arise in future attempts to merge large power plants. In a way, it helped highlight the wisdom of using individually installed engines with robust separation and firewalls. Even into the modern era, engineers designing multi-engine setups, whether for propeller or turboprop, or even racing motorsports, often recall the pitfalls of pushing too much horsepower through a single gearbox without adequate cooling and fail-safes. For Daimler-Benz, their name and engine innovation endured beyond World War II, though primarily an automotive, where eventually they became part of the Daimler legacy. In that sense, the DB606's fiasco didn't doom the company entirely, no, no. Nevertheless, it remains a cautionary tale in aviation engineering about the danger of letting politics and hubris overshadow practical design. The most ironic twist in the DB606 saga may be that the engine's greatest strength, consolidated power, is exactly what made the HE-177 so dangerous to fly. At a time when Germany craved any technological edge, this engine promised the world and instead delivered nightmares. Fire hazards, catastrophic mid-air engine breakdowns, and forced landings, these weren't isolated events, but frighteningly common. Imagine a crew inside a massive bomber at high altitude, smelling smoke and realizing that the very technology that was meant to give them an advantage was about to seal their fate. Few stories in aviation highlight such a stark contrast between promise and outcome. The DB-606 was championed as a testament to German engineering prowess, yet it became one of the regime's most public engineering catastrophes. The failure was not just a mechanical shortfall, but a symbol of how extreme ambition, unchecked by realistic testing and practical design, could sabotage an entire war effort. Today, the DB-606 stands as an emblem of the Luftwaffe's misguided attempts to merge conflicting design requirements under oppressive political pressures. It's a vivid reminder that technology alone cannot overcome flawed strategy or the laws of physics. For all its theoretical power, it's remembered less as an innovation and more as a cautionary tale. The tragic part is how many crew members paid the price for an engine design that was, in some ways, too bold for its time and environment. The 177 and its DB606 power plants might have changed the game if given proper development time and freed from unrealistic demands, but in the ruthless context of World War II, there's no such luxury. Instead, they earned a dark legacy. The shocking truth is that the DB606 was a microcosm of Nazi Germany's war machine. Maybe impressive on paper, but riddled with contradictions in practice, and ultimately undone by its own overreach. If you appreciate deep dives into the lesser-known chapters of aviation history, be sure to subscribe for more stories of ambition, brilliance, and sometimes catastrophic miscalculation in the skies. Thanks for watching, and stay curious about the planes that shaped our world, both the triumphs and the cautionary tales.